Well, what do you guys think of that? He's, uh, he's becoming straight piped. So, and I'm not fixing it because I already tried and it's blown out there where the L or the L shaped pipe bend goes into the part of the header there, or manifold, or whatever you want to call it, the stupid thing. Um, it had a clamp on there, but I don't think it's doing anything anymore. And then I tried to fix it, I put a hose clamp on it. It did seem to stiffen it up. And then, uh, but then on the back side, it was it was blowing blowing exhaust out. So I think you'd have to replace that little section there or something. I don't know if there was supposed to be some kind of a some kind of a filler in there, you know, that makes a nice tight seal, or, or I don't know, but it's not there anymore. So. Um, Pretty much just, you know, the hell with it. Um, I don't know how big of a job that would be to fix it. And obviously I'm not going to fix it because it's just, you know, the hell with it. Should have left the four-wheeler outside, I guess, let the sun dry it off. But Now, this is one of the machines that you just can't, you just you can't care about it anymore. It's just, there's no hope in trying to fix this hunk of crap because it needs more shit than I have money to fix it so um, the exhaust pipe went out a few days ago a couple days ago depending on when this video gets uploaded uh, I got a bowl joint out on that side on the lower side I already did a video on that and I think that one's probably starting to go out and then recently the uh, the charging system gave up. Um, I thought it was the voltage regulator. Everybody talks about that that's usually the number one problem. I already replaced that. No hope there. So now it's now it's telling me that the main charging system down on the motor there is, is wore out. Um, I think I talked to the the lady her and that one guy, they work on these machines. They're a repair shop, and I think they get the ball joints replaced. They were talking about maybe four hundred dollars. It just it depends on how much they fight. Um, no clue what the charging system is going to cost. I imagine they're both the same because they got to rip this whole entire front end off and pull the fuel tank and all that fun jazzy shit. Uh, and then for the muffler, I don't really know. Um, what would cost to fix that? That might be a simple fix, but again, I don't know. And it would have to get fixed at the same time, you know, all that gets fixed. So, this damn four wheeler's got three problems, and usually three strikes are out. So, I kind of just, uh, right now I'm at the point where I just don't give a flying F, you know, what happens to this machine. I just, um, yeah, I took it off for a spin today um not much of a spin obviously but um it's, this is technically going to be the nicest day that we have given that it's uh you know the end of november so but then after this heat stroke that we're having um it's supposed to get extremely cold again so any melting that's happening now it's just going to turn to stinking ice so but I don't know. It's just uh, uh, the way I figured, because I, like I said, I don't know. I'm just saying that for the charging system, it could be about $500, but I don't really know that for sure. So I'm just giving you guys some rough numbers. $500 for charging system to be redone. Bowl joints, another $400, $500, depending on how hard they fight. And then the exhaust pipe, well, that could be anywhere from 100 bucks to who knows what, you know. Because I don't really know exactly what's wrong with it. If they can just fix that connection, or we'd have to put a whole new exhaust system on just to fix that one little problem. I don't really know. You think it'd just be a simple fix that connection and you'd be good as good as new again? But I 
I don't know. I'm not. I haven't looked into it that far. So um, I got other things that are more priority than this hunk of shit. So I. Uh, I don't know if I uh, if I can get big red in. I guess maybe this um, spring. Um, then I'll get them fixed. But uh, I can kind of see why people, you know, they trade these things off after so many years or whatever. You know, it's just they start having such major problems, and then it's just one right after another. Um, this exhaust system, that's the newest problem. Uh, the bolt joints are the oldest problem because I think they've been out for a couple of years already. I just didn't notice it until last year because I noticed how this tire, uh, this tire, that tire is leaned out, you know, at the bottom. It's kicked out. And this one's just starting to do the same thing now, too. So it's telling me that the, the bolt joints have taken a shit on the lower side uppers are probably all right but you know if you're going to replace one you might as well do them do all four so then you don't have to worry about it um but at some point you just have to say you know enough is enough and, and when do you call it so but i just i don't know just kind of you know stuck right now so have to kind of deal with it I guess and uh, if anything else breaks well then you know it's just it's just time to freaking sell the machine I know some people are going to be like oh why don't you just you know trade it in for a new one well there, there's the problem if I don't have money to fix so if I don't have money to fix big red what makes you think that I have money to go buy a new machine you know that's what people don't understand is that there's no money there so and if people are like oh well if you trade big red in you know you get maybe a thousand bucks you know, and Big Red's worth a thousand bucks, rough number, you know, then you get an extra thousand bucks off your bill. Well, yeah, but then I also have a friend, too, that also works at the, at the Polaris plant, and I can get another two thousand off there, you know, so that's, you know, three thousand dollars that I could be saving if Big Red is still worth a thousand bucks in the condition that he is, you know. But I've already put in, like, twelve hundred dollars into having the, the the shifter thing fixed in the transmission so you know and that that was a big job you know for them but obviously they i mean they did a pretty damn good job at it because that happened uh, i don't know what two years ago three years ago something like that and of course now i have also uh shortened the tension spring on the shifter so everything's a lot easier now to shift but um I have, I've had zero problems with it. So these people know what the fuck they're doing. You know, it's just that, you know, you, you need the money to, you know, fix all this. So, and, and if it's going there to get, you know, ball joints and now the charging system, you might as well get the exhaust looked at too and, you know, just get all these problems fixed. Okay, then it, it'd be a good machine. But then, you know, next breakdown. You know, what's the next breakdown going to be? Is it, is it going to be that it throws a stinking connecting rod, you know? So, and this machine's got almost, uh, what is it, 8,500 miles? You know, like, it, it's up there. Um, oops, wrong one. Let's see here. Yeah, it's almost 8,500 miles. i put it on 15 since I filled it up, but... Yeah, you just, you know... It's just, yeah, it's time for a new machine, unfortunately, but I don't have the money for that. And I've looked at the newer machines, and I just, not that they're ugly or anything like that. It's just the colors are so stupid. They just don't have no colors. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. They have maybe one color that I'm okay with. All the other colors are garbage. I don't understand what happened to Polaris to where they can't make up more colors, you know, like, <clears throat> I mean, if you go back to like 2012, 2013, 2014, some of those areas, they had so many colors to choose from. It was crazy. It was an unbelievable amount of colors. And they had two, you know, including this red, that was my favorite. They had a red. I think this is the sunset red. And then they had an orange 
which you know was orange, and then they had a blue, and that was those are good colors. And I was like, well, I can go find another machine, and you know, I used one, and and you know, have a, a different color, but buying used is also kind of a risk too, you know. So, it, it, you know, they still make the 850s, but then they also make the 1000s. So well, I don't really need a 1000. They're just ridiculously so much power. But they, uh, they're just so limited on colors. It's just ridiculous. It's like, you know, it's the same thing with their Polaris Rangers, too. It's like, uh, you only get this color or you get that color or, or you know, whatever. It's like, come on, Polaris. You can do better than that. You know. I don't know where they had to skimp on colors. You know, it's like you're making a machine for somebody to enjoy. Don't you think they're going to want to have a color that they like as well? You know, it's just like, you're your, your just stinking noggin. You know, I don't know what the hell Polaris is thinking, but, I mean, they still make good machines. I mean, the, the new ones are a little more fancier, you know, than what I need, but I need a... Uh, a new machine I need I need something reliable so but what are you gonna do you know it costs just uh, if you think let's just say if this to fix everything here um, let's just say it costs two thousand dollars that's just a rough number don't go all crazy in the comments sections this is just a rough number um, and if you put twelve hundred on top of that on top of that 2000 well you know there's a lot of money right there spent on just this one machine for repairs and it's just not getting any easier you know it's just it's more breakdowns more breakdowns costing you more money and you know all that money that I spent on that could have went into something a little more important but Big Red here is is you know, it's an important machine, so I do need it, but unfortunately, it's just, it's, you know, money is the main thing that's stopping me from getting a new machine. And I think you can finance through Polaris, but they still want a lot a month. And knowing my luck, I probably wouldn't qualify anyway, so I just don't really waste my time with it because, you know, I've tried in the past and. They turn you down, so, well, not from Polaris, but from other companies, you know, that I wanted to get stuff from, and they said, nope, so, I think, well, screw you then, <laughs> so, but, yeah, um, it's just, yeah, it's definitely time for a, uh, new machine, but unfortunately, I won't be able to get one for another couple of years or something, probably even longer than that, see, that's the kind of thing to do is, you know, it takes so long to save up this kind of money. And I'm doing the best that I can, but I have other little repairs in the house that need to get stinking done. I got things there that are wrong, and I got to fix that. And, you know, it's just little things, you know. And, and, and I got to fix them, because then it drives me freaking bonkers. And, of course, this is, driving, this is driving me bonkers, too, but it's out of my hands. Because this is a much larger bill, you know, than the stuff in the house that's, like, under under a hundred dollars, you know. So there's just there's no money to really put away, and it takes time. So figure it out. Probably by spring, maybe. But then by then, you know, he might have other breakdowns. Given that I probably won't be driving him too much after this, because once we get into that cold snap, I'm probably not going to want to really go anywhere. But um, so yeah, and that's another thing too is when I'm done. I gotta put the uh, the damn maintainer on it to keep the battery fully charged because, like I said, it does not want to charge. So, because the charging system went out, or you can call it an alternator, but it's not really like an alternator in a, in a car, but it does the same does the same thing, but it's just not an actual alternator. So, but yeah, gotta put that stupid thing on all the time and. and uh, and then I got to plug it into the extension cord, and yeah, I got a newer battery. I got a pretty new battery, um, so 
So, I mean, it'll hold a charge, like the battery's good, but it's just the fact that since the machine won't charge, the battery goes down after a while. So, I don't get much runtime. So, if I wanted to uh, run this thing all stinking day, well, it's not going to happen. You only get probably an hour or two of, of actual runtime, and then that's it. So, yeah, he's got a red light, so that means that the battery, it's not like dead dead, but its it's gone down enough that obviously this thing has to, you know, fill it back up now to keep the battery from going bad, so. But yeah, that's kind of an unfortunate thing. Um, that these machines are just, I mean, I, I guess you can't get too mad because, you know, this four wheels had a pretty hard life, but. Ah, it just breaks down at the worst times of the year, you know, and there's no money there. So, kind of just sucks. But, whatever. Once the money is available, you know, then I will fix up Big Red. But I'm still thinking about buying a brand new one. I mean, I, I want to keep Big Red no matter what because I want to put my sprayer on them. Because Big Red will just become my sprayer rig then. Um, but I'll get a new one just for joyriding around and, you know, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so, but I just, I don't know. Those new ones, yeah, they're 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 more expensive. I don't think I'm going to go with, with, a, with a 1,000, though. It's just, I don't think it's necessary. I think another 850 will, will be just fine. So, um... Yeah, so, but they're but they're still expensive too. You can get a base model, and, and it's way you know it's only like like eleven thousand dollars, but it's still more than what Big Red was new. Now it costed me eleven thousand, but that's because I got a snow plow and a winch and and all the other stuff, right? So, I think if I would have gotten Big Red just bare bones, he would have been probably about nine ten thousand, you know. So, you can tell how the prices have definitely increased over the years. But that's mostly because they they're putting more computers in them, and and you know it just it runs the cost up, and then you know and everybody's blaming the war and, and the Ukraine there and other stuff, and it's like yeah you know it, it might have a somewhat of effect on it, but this is getting to be ridiculous. You know I think it's mostly just because they want to try to suck you dry and whatever else, but. It's definitely time to have at least two machines here, so that way the new one I can just trade off every few years and, you know, not give a shit. So, I don't know. But, it's an unfortunate thing, but you know how it goes with these old things. So, I'm probably the only guy in this whole entire world that's still owned his machine since new. I've owned Big Red since he was new. I'm the original owner, one owner, probably not, I don't know who else would do that, but I am, because <laughs> I try to get maximum years out of my, of my machines, but you know, I think I could get a many more years out of Big Red, I guess if I just had the funds to keep fixing them all the time, but I still want a second one anyway, <clears throat> you know, just so I can still get around, herd cattle, and check fencing and stuff like that, and and not worry about it. You know, Big Red can go in the shop and get repaired, and I can go still cruising around and, and you know, do what I got to do. So, I also wouldn't mind uh, adding a snowcat to my collection as well. But I haven't looked into them right now. It's just things I got to get done right now is I got to finish the Tahoe project. I got things to do with that that I got to get done. And then. Some small things in the house, and then, then Big Red's gonna become priority, and I gotta start saving up money for him. Trying to get him fixed back up, and then you know from there on, it's just it, it is what it's gonna be whatever's next in line. I gotta finish the Tahoe, and then get him in for repairs again, and then after that we'll see what happens. But I don't know, so. Would be nice. It would be nice for a new machine. That's for sure. But I mean, 
funds are tight and it just kind of is what it is so I don't know it's just <laughs> I don't know it's it's something all right but I don't know I just don't like I said I just don't really care for the new machines because they're just I mean it's mostly just the colors there's just nothing there for colors they're all ugly there's probably like maybe one that's all right you know but the rest of them are garbage so I don't know what you know what players is thinking on that on that end you know it's just like come on you did it for many years you had multiple different colors to pick from and all of a sudden now you're just like eh, it's costing me too much money I gotta make more money than you so I'm just gonna give you a couple of colors and there you go Fortunately, I think players could do better than that but what are you gonna do so until players decides to come up with a better color selection I just, again, I don't know if I can justify buying a brand new one because the, the colors are just so damn ugly, but there's only one there that's, you know, like acceptable for me, but I don't know. So, I guess we'll just see what happens, but yeah, anyways, guys, I guess I'll take off. Um, and it's kind of funny, too, because I was in the process of putting a, uh, you know, a CB radio back on this thing. You guys probably seen the mounts. Um, CB antenna mount, and here's my antenna. And that was going to happen months ago, but then the stinking uh, charging system took a crap. So, figured off well, if I put a CB radio on it, it'll probably just kill the battery. Anyway, even though I keep it on a maintainer, but it might kill the battery a little quicker. So, I had to abandon that project for now. So now, I don't know. It's just ridiculous. So I'm still going to do it. Still put the CB radio on if I get them fixed and get the Tahoe done. And that'll be another thing I get done on this machine. Just get the CB radio put back on it. I get a new machine. It's probably going to have a CB radio put on it too. I just got to figure out what Polaris did different there. Because here they made it pretty simple. Um, probably not going to be able to see because it it's too dark. But right here these holes... This is where your brush guard would mount to if you had a brush guard on the back. But it's all metal. I believe it's all metal right to the frame. So, you know, I put this metal bar on here and got this quick disconnect put on. And, you know, so my, my antenna can go there and around my coax and, you know, it's typical stuff. So, um, but what if they did something different there with the new machines... I don't know, and I think the newer machines now, I think depending on the model and the trim level, I think they already come from the factory with the brush guards, if you're going for the more higher end model. If you're going for a base model, then I don't think you get that, but, um, see, because if, I imagine the brush guards are made out of metal, but I think they have some kind of a thing over them. It's almost like bed bed liner stuff, and I don't know if my antennas would ever get a get a good ground to through that. So, you know, you would have to figure something out there so you could put a radio on that too. And, or I could just go with a brand new uh, Polaris Ranger and pay like thirty two thousand dollars with a fully enclosed cab, heat and air, and radio. But um, I don't really. I would like to have a Ranger, but just. I don't know. I'm not saying that John Deere Gators are much cheaper because they're really not. They're about the damn same as a, a freaking Polaris Ranger, you know, a fully loaded model. So John Deere Gators that are fully loaded, they're about thirty-two thousand as well. So I I just like the John Deere Gators. I think they got a better cab design inside. Don't care for the lack of power and speed. That's where Ranger is better because they have more horsepower and more speed. But sometimes speed's not always necessary, but the power is necessary. So I don't know what they're thinking there. But I don't know. Some companies are better than others, and you know, and then the opposite. So with players, you get more horsepower and stuff like that. I'm not saying that their cabs are garbage either. It's just I just like John Deere's better. But if I had to get a 
Polaris Ranger also be it. It'd, it'd still get the job done. The main thing I'd be in for for a cab is you know heating and air conditioning and just having a cab. Because <laughs> it sucks have it's that's one thing that sucks about this machine is that obviously there's no cab on it. So you get all the wind, the rain, the snow, and yada yada yada. You get all that shit to the face. So it sucks. But that's the point of a four wheeler, I guess. Oh, there goes some snow. I don't know. You guys tell me what you would do, I guess. If you guys if you guys are in the market for a new machine, what would you get? Another four wheeler or a ranger or a, a gator, John Deere Gator or or I don't know, whatever. <laughs> so but yeah, things I wouldn't mind getting. Um brand new four wheeler. Unless I can get myself a better deal on a Ranger, then I'd probably just go for a Ranger, but I'd rather have a four wheeler. They're a little more compact, but the cab would be nice. Ah, uh, and then I definitely would like to get my hands on a Snowcat. And then I gotta get my hands on a trailer, which I'm probably just gonna go with a PJ trailer or something. I don't know. So worry about that when that time comes, I guess. But Yeah, I don't know. There goes more snow falling off, so well, yeah, I do apologize for this long video, but yeah, it's just kind of, it's, I just took him for a spin, I guess, because you know what, this is going to be our last nicest day ever. It's supposed to get up to 40, but I don't think it's going to get quite to 40. Um, it's obviously above 32 degrees because things are definitely melting, so that's a good thing, but, yeah, so, I don't know. It is what it is, right? So, but, yeah, I guess let me know, guys, if there's any new guys out there watching this video or whatever. I guess let me know if, how long you've owned the four-wheeler or, or if you've still owned the same one since new or, you know, or like whatever, you know. Just give me your history, I guess. I've owned mine since new. I'm a one-owner to this hunk of crap, so... But I guess we spend another two thousand dollars, we fix the problems, and maybe it'll last another year, and you know, maybe it'll it'll throw a stupid connecting rod. Then that'll definitely be the end of it if it throws a connecting rod. So, or you break a gearbox. I, as far as I haven't snapped a gearbox yet, or or a drive shaft or something. So, who knows? It's all going to happen eventually. You know, that's just part of owning old machines I guess but I got enough bad luck already I need to get rid of some bad luck and I think Big Red's definitely some bad luck so I think he needs to be parked and kind of just forgotten about I guess or get rid of it I know the neighbors here they were interested in kind of buying them they think they said that if I didn't think I got a, would get a good deal at it you know from a, or at a dealer but that they would buy it, I, yeah, I'm not going to sell it to them. One, they ain't going to have the money to fix this piece of shit, because I barely have the money, and we're both pretty much in the same condition, except I don't have a child on the way, so, if the girl over there does, and she's going to need all her money to take care of that child, so I think having a four-wheeler is the least of her concerns, but... They, they are nice to have, but you got to have damn good money to take care of these machines, too. And obviously, I'm lacking in that department, but it's just because I have other things that are more priority. Like I said, that Tahoe, and i got to get that done, and, and, and then Big Red will be next to get some more tension again. So, but yeah, three problems already. So, of course, the exhaust is kind of a minor thing, but it's just so damn annoying being so freaking loud, but what are you going to do? So, whatever. Anyways, guys, I guess I'm going to take off, so I guess I uh, have a good day and stuff and stuff. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Take her easy.